Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make the Jade Palace and so much more from the movie Kung Fu Panda. If you have any suggestions on what I should make next, whether it is from a movie, cartoon, video game, or even from real life, let me know down there in the comment section. I would love to know what you guys want to see next. Consider becoming a channel member today and you will gain access to a cool avatar next to your name, some unique emojis, and access to my mini city design world containing every single build that has been added to mini city to date. This is well over a hundred builds, all chronologically ordered. Java edition only. This is the amount of space required to make the Jade Palace. Here are all of the materials that we will use throughout the build. Begin by placing 20 stone extending up from the ground. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Then extend to the right by 15. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Then place 8 stone brick stairs, extending right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We then want to place 16 stone. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. We then want to extend backwards by 42. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42. For the next part, we simply want to extend all the way across and join back to where we first started. So I'm actually going to come all the way over here because I'll find it rather difficult to eyeball where we will have to connect to without extending partly this way as what Wait, hey, whoa, hang on. Guys, forget everything that I just said. That was 100% perfectly planned. Definitely didn't do that on accident. So we have effectively made a rather large squarish, possibly rectangular shape. What we now want to do is add a bit of floor to this. So first of all, we are going to place one, two, three, four, five, six rows of smooth stone extending inwards from the front of our rectangle square. I'm going to call it a square. I'm almost certain it's a rectangle. But the word rectangle takes so much longer to say than square. We then want to add three rows of smooth stone extending along the left side, one, two, three, of our square, and three rows, one, two, three, of smooth stone along the right side of our square. These extend all the way to the back.
We then want to connect the back three rows of smooth stone together, left to right, across the back of our square. Now let's start building the palace. Come all the way to the front left hand side of the square and come and locate this block right here. On top of this block place a red concrete. At right of it place two red terracotta. One, two. And then a red concrete, two red terracotta, red concrete, two red terracotta, red concrete, two red terracotta, so on and so forth, extending all the way over to the right side of the build. If all has went well, we will end in the same place that we started, but on this side. We now want to extend towards the back of the build, so we want to place four lots of two red terracotta red concrete extending backwards, so that would be one, two, three, four. So we want to do that four times. We then want to place eight red terracotta extending back, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then we want to go back to the same old pattern, so red concrete, two terracotta, concrete, two terracotta, so on and so forth, extending all the way back. And once again, if things have went well, we will end here. We then want to repeat this pattern all the way across the back of the build. And once again, if all has went well, we will simply outline the giant empty space that we have. So now we want to extend back towards the front of the build and we want to repeat what we have on the opposite side of the build. Four lots of the pattern that we have been making almost continuously all the way around the build. Once we have done four lots of it, we want to place eight red terracotta, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then we want to go back to our pattern. And once again, all being well, we will connect all the way back to the very place where we started. Next, we are going to work on the palace entrance. The entrance is opposite this row of stone brick stairs that we placed earlier. We want to raise up this red concrete by three, one, two, three, and this red concrete by three, one, two, three. So the significance for this is that you can see that this just sits outside of the stairs, just one row on both sides. We then want to raise up the red concretes between them. We also want to add two rows of red terracotta, just extending up from the bottom. And then we want to place yellow glazed terracotta at the top. The ideal way of placing the yellow glazed terracotta is this. We want them to be back to back, like so. But if if you're a little bit lazy like me, maybe you just kind of like place them just however they just decide to get placed. I won't tell anybody and it also still looks good. It's just that we've got to do a lot of this and well, I mean, if, if you're lazy like me, you might get sick of doing it, but that's up to you. Okay, next we are going to place mangrove slabs like this. These slabs are going to extend up on the left and right side and connect together just underneath or just along the bottom of the yellow glazed terracotta line. We then want to create two rows of mangrove planks in the center of this, extending down with a bamboo fence left and right just one row off the ground. We want to place prismarine bricks here and here with sideways prismarine brick stairs. One of these is wrong. It's this one. There we go. Extending in from the outside towards the center. So just connecting diagonally. We can then remove these blocks and these blocks 
And I'm actually on the fence as to whether or not mangrove doors look good here or whether we would just leave those open. I'll leave that for you to decide. But regardless, this is the entrance. We then want to place one, two, three red concretes on top of every single red concrete that we have placed. So extending all the way around the outside of our build, three red concretes on top of every single red concrete. This amounts to quite a few. Once you have done that, we then want to place two rows of white stained glass on top of our red terracottas in between our new rows of red concrete. The only place that we don't have to do this is on the side where we have the long rows of red terracotta. What we want to do here instead is simply just fill all of this space in with red terracotta, but that is the only outlier. And of course the exact same on this opposite side as well. We then want to place yellow glazed terracotta on top of all of our white stained glass. This is where you can make the executive decision to not place all of the yellow terracotta correctly, but I, I am going to do it. I just think it's easier to just place all of one first. I could probably just place the right one. I'm, I'm kind of making it hard on myself, but it's okay. So we place, hang on, how do we do it? Okay, so we, we've got to come around this way. So this is how to do it. So we've got to, there we go, okay. There we go, that's perfect. In all fairness, it does look significantly better this way. Okay, next we have to place bamboo trapdoors in front of the red terracotta and also the glass. So we've got to do this quite a lot. If you like, you can make it so that on the sides you have it kind of like open or maybe you could differentiate it from the front maybe just like have the windows covered but i have found that it just looks best to do well the exact same thing all the way around and this is the decoration that i i prefer out of all of it so do feel free to change it though placing the trapdoors can uh, become a little bit tedious Oh, there we go. That was clean. Oh, guys, I'm... Ah, oh, no. I, I failed again. At least you can turn it into a game. I'm trying to place them all without making any mistakes.
It'd help if I was willing to not just hold down my right mouse button. But that's just, that's a sacrifice that I'm, oh, so clean. That is a sacrifice that I'm just not willing to make. Oh, wow, look at that. This might be one of the most... Oh, and again, he's on a roll. This might be one of the most satisfying... I've done it again. Oh, that is... No! I was, on a, I was on a hot streak. That's one of the most satisfying things ever. Guys, you can't, you can't click this. You've just got to hold down the trigger or the right mouse button or whatever you're doing this on. It is... You've got to do it in, like, all one motion. Otherwise, it's just... You don't get that level of fun. Level of fun? What am I talking about? It is satisfying, though. There we go. One last time. No. No! Next, we are going to place a layer of prisperine bricks all the way along the top of our walls. On the front of the build, we want to extend the bricks forward by three rows. One, two, three. We then want to connect some of these bricks down to the ground. So this left corner, for example, we want to connect down to the ground using red concrete. We also want to connect this row here that corresponds with this brick down to the ground. And also this row here connect down to the ground. And this row. And this row. And this row. This is a lot easier to see just from, there we go, from the outside looking in. Now that we've done that, next come inside of the build and find this prismarine brick right here. It's easy to find, it's right between these two end windows. On top of this brick, place three more. One, two, three. Extend all the way over across and join to the equivalent position on the opposite side, which would be right here. So once you've done that, we now want to come to the back of the build. We want to connect the tops of the end windows together. We want to place a row of prismarine bricks extending in from the tops of both windows until we hit this right angle here, which we then want to extend up by three, one, two, three, and then we can just remove these outer blocks. The same on this opposite side here. So extend these inwards, create a right angle on top of these, one, two, three, and then remove these blocks. So we can now connect these together at the back, and we can also connect to the front of the build. And we're just going to do this on both sides. So now that we have done that, we are going to place a row of dark prismarine on top of the prismarine bricks that sit along the outside of our palace walls. So all the way along the outside, just like this, a layer of dark prismarine bricks. Once you've done that, we now want to place a layer of dark prismarine slabs that sit above and inside of the dark prismarine. So these extend up and towards the center of the build. Thank you. 
Then we want to place a layer of dark prismarine that just sits along the inside of the dark prismarine slabs. And just for my own personal sanity, it's just dark prismarine. Okay, I thought it was dark prismarine bricks. My bad. We then want to place a layer of dark prismarine slabs all the way along the outside of the first row of dark prismarine that we placed. The slabs sit along the bottom of the row. Once you have done that once, we now want to add an additional layer of dark prismarine slabs along the outside of the row that we have just made. Now that we have done that, we want to do something ever so slightly tricky. On each one of the four corners of the edge of the roof, we want to add this really cool curled part of the roof. So the easiest way to do this, I think, is to line up with this row of red concrete here on the back and here on the side. So this applies to each one of the corners. We then take the dark prismarine slab that corresponds with the prismarine brick slash the red concrete here in between the windows and then we want to extend this slab upwards here and here remove all of these slabs in between we then want to extend these slabs inwards and upwards until they eventually connect together like this so we end up with this really cool curled shape what we can then do is remove these dark prismarine slabs, remove these, extend the prismarine bricks upwards, and we want to place enough prismarine bricks that we can cover up all of this. It might be easier to first connect these dark prismarine slabs inwards to the roof. This is what we have to do, by the way. We have to extend these slabs inwards on both sides in equal portion towards each other, like this. So the top of the roof will look like that. You can see you've just extended inwards. And underneath, there we go, that's absolutely perfect. We will have this. So it may in fact be easier, oh, we have to, oh no, we don't. So it may in fact be easier to extend the slabs first and then place the uh, prismarine brick around. And now that we have done this on this corner of the build, we want to come to every single other corner and do the exact same thing. So just to run it through one more time, we locate this block here in between the end pair of windows on just both corners like this. We remove all of the slabs in the middle and then we extend the slabs upwards and inwards until they eventually just connect together like this. We are then going to try just extending the slabs in, like so. Like this here, 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 just connect together like this. And then we can remove these blocks, these blocks, here, here. And we'll just start placing the prismarine bricks and, oh, we just have to remove that one as well, that's perfect. Then we will have to just add a slab just here and there and eventually we will end up with the exact same thing So we're just going to repeat this two more times So on the front of the build I actually realized that there isn't a pair of windows for us to use But we would use this row here this pillar here and then if we come to the front We would line up with this window here and that is the exact same amount of spacing that we use on the back so if you just line up with those two particular points, uh, you will end up with the exact same thing that we have made two times already.
Moving on to the final side once again, just lining up with here and also just here. Next, seemingly randomly, we are just going to add some andensite wall all the way along the stone blocks that we placed so long ago. We really should have done it before we placed all of these smooth stone, but I kind of just forgot about it. And then we are going to place a layer of prismarine wall all the way along the top of the prismarine bricks. So these are at the top of the build. We are now going to be moving, once we've done this, on to the next level of the build, which is very exciting. Next, we want to place three layers of smooth stone extending inwards from the outside of our empty space. So along the inside of our prismarine bricks, we simply just want to place first of all one layer of smooth stone. Then another row. And one last time. Guys, I, I forgot something on the first level. I'm starting to think that I've got ADD. Briefly coming down to the previous level of the build, we want to, from each one of the four corners of our prismarine bricks here, we want to remove these dark prismarines and place one, two, three prismarine bricks extending outwards with a block of gold on the end. And we actually want to do this on each one of the four corners. So remove this and this, one, two, three, block of gold. So we want to do this here, and I, I don't think I have to explain what a corner is to you guys, so we have to remove these here, one, two, three, block of gold, so on and so forth. There we go, perfect. I, I feel as though that I could have easily have forgot about that the entire tutorial. Okay, so actually moving up to the next level now, we want to come and locate this smooth stone block right here. It actually doesn't matter which corner you start on, as we are going to place a red concrete on the corner, and then right of it, two red terracotta. Then a red concrete, two red terracotta, red concrete, to red terracotta, so on and so forth, extending all the way around the edge of our empty space.
all being well, that is a pattern that we will be able to repeat and connect all the way back to the start of. We then want to place three red concrete on top of every single red concrete that we placed. One, two, three, one, two, three, so on and so forth, all the way around. Now that we have done that, we are going to place two layers of white stained glass on top of all of our rows of red terracotta. On top of the white stained glass, we have to place yellow glazed terracotta. This time, instead of placing the yellow glazed terracotta willy-nilly, we are going to place it correctly. This is something that I don't usually do, but there we go. So that's actually perfect. We want all of those, and then to place the opposite one, we kind of like have to Go around anti-clockwise, there we go, and that is going to look fantastic. It actually does make a surprising level of difference, placing them the correct way. And it's not too much of a hassle, I think I might just be extremely lazy. So now that we have done that, we are going to place bamboo trapdoors in front of all of the red terracotta and in front of all of the glass. So all the way around. Next, we are going to place a layer of prismarine bricks on top of this particular level of the palace. We then want to add a layer of prismarine bricks along the outside of the layer of bricks that we just placed. We also want to place a layer of prismarine bricks along the inside as well.
Next, we want to place two prismarine bricks here in this corner, one, two, all the way over here in this corner, one, two, and also at the back, one, two, one, two. We can then connect the upper layer of prismarine bricks together. I don't think it is necessary to connect the bottom layer. We then want to place a layer of dark prismarine along the outer row of prismarine bricks. We then want to place a layer of dark prismarine slabs above and inside of our dark prismarine, connecting to these prismarine bricks at the top. We then want to place a layer of dark prismarine slabs extending outwards from the lower half of our dark prismarine row. Losing my voice. Next, we are going to add another layer of dark prismarine slabs all the way along the outside of the previous row that we just made. We then want to apply the same corner roof design that we have on the previous level of the build to this level of the build, which means we locate this row of red concrete here, follow it up to the dark prismarine, mark this out, this row of red concrete here, follow it up to the dark prismarine, mark it out. We then remove all of these slabs in between and then extend these slabs upwards and inwards until they eventually meet like this. And then we want to extend these slabs in towards the center. And then we are going to remove these blocks here and here as well, I believe. We'll just remove all these, it's fine. And we will place prismarine bricks when necessary. So there we go, it'll look like that. We do just have to add a few slabs here and there. Might have to check the top as well. Nope, the top is perfect. And once we have done this on this corner, of course, we can go ahead and do the exact same thing on the other corner. So the exact same methodology. This time there's no sort of weirdness on where we place it on like the front of the build versus the back of the build because this is completely symmetrical. So once you've done it once, you've kind of done it a thousand times.
Eventually, we will have placed this on each one of the four corners. Next, we are going to place prismarine wall along the top of our prismarine bricks. We are then going to place two layers of smooth stone extending inwards along the inside of our prismarine bricks. So this is going to be... <laughs> One layer of smooth stone and then we are going to add a second and final layer. Next, come all the way over to this corner of the build. It actually doesn't even matter which corner you pick because once again, in the corner, we are going to place a red concrete, right of it, two red terracotta, red concrete, two red terracotta, red concrete, so on and so forth, extending all the way around this empty space that we have in the center of the build. And all being well, we will once again connect to where we very first started. We are then going to place three red concrete on top of each one of our red concretes. One, two, three, one, two, three, so on and so forth. Now that we have done that, we are going to place two rows of white stained glass on top of each one of our rows of red terracottas. We then want to place yellow glazed terracotta on top of our glass. And once again, we want to place this in a particular way. Luckily, this is the last time that we will ever have to do this. And I believe that we have actually nailed this. So once again, if you just place all of the right side first, then in a counterclockwise motion, place all of the others, kind of like facing this way, then you can't really go too far wrong. And now that we have done that, we are going to apply bamboo trap doors to all of the red terracotta and all of the white stained glass. Next, we are going to place a layer of prismarine bricks along the top of our walls. Mm -hmm. 
Then, we want to add a layer of bricks along the outside of this. Next, we want to add a layer of dark prismarine slabs all the way along the outside of the top of our prismarine bricks. And now that we have added one layer, let's add another along the outside of it. Next, we are going to add the same corner-ish shape to the corners of this roof as we have done to all of the other previous levels. It's a little bit different this time in that we are going to line up with the very corner of this part of the build here, place a slab, and the very corner, this slab here. Remove everything in the middle, and then we are going to do what we have always done, kind of just extend inwards and upwards, and meet in the middle. So the only thing with this is the, I, I don't think that we'll be placing any prismarine, or I, I guess we can. I, d I don't know if this is going to kind of like get in the way, but like we, as a matter of fact, if we extend these slabs inwards anyway, then you, you just, you just get to see this corner prismarine. There's actually, there's there's like nothing nothing else to it. So we can do this like on every single side. So we'd mark out this block here and this block, remove everything in the middle, extend inwards and upwards here. And then we'll remove this here, then here, here, extend this here, here, just join in the corner like this and there we go, that's perfect. So, the exact same thing on each one of the four corners. It might have been a little bit easier to wait, as usual, until we do the next part of the roof, but I think that we just get this done now, and um, if we do have to make any alterations to this, it, it won't be a big deal whatsoever. So, let's just extend all of these. Well, now that we have completed that part of the roof, we want to work our way to the right side of our build, and we want to come and locate this row of red concrete here. Follow this up on top of the build and place dark prismarine slabs on top of those blocks that correspond with that row of red concrete, and then place a prismarine brick along the inside of this, extend up, place dark prismarine along the inside of this, Two prismarine bricks on top, dark prismarine along the inside this, two prismarine bricks on top, extend the upper prismarine brick to the right by seven using dark prismarine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, then place a prismarine brick, extend down, and then two dark prismarine underneath, one, two, two prismarine bricks, then dark prismarine extending down, might be easier just to drop here, then prismarine bricks along the outside. We then want to place a block of gold here and here. We want to fill in between these in with dark prismarine as well. Just like this. And then we are going to come onto the opposite side of the build and do the exact same thing. So once again, lining up with this row of red concrete here, we are going to place dark prismarine slabs here, prismarine brick here, place one on top, Dark prismarine along the inside, two prismarine bricks. Dark prismarine along the inside, two prismarine bricks. Block of gold on top, but we also want to place one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Dark prismarine extending back. Prismarine block here, two dark prismarine, two bricks, two dark prismarine, two bricks. 
we that <laughs> oh okay that's that's quite a drop so <laughs> we then want to connect i didn't see that coming and then we want to connect both sides together just like this perfect oh we also need to add a block of gold here as well there we go perfect so we can now on the front of the build connect the lower prismarine bricks together just left to right like this then add dark prismarine stairs on top of the dark prismarine and we want to do this on both sides oh also just at the top here as well stairs on top of the dark prismarine and we want to do the exact same thing on the back of the build also and then dark prismarine stairs on top of the dark prismarine then we are going to just fill the very top of this in with dark prismarine Just like that and then we are simply just going to pretty much we'll have to remove this block here we are just going to place dark prismarine slabs on top of all of the prismarine bricks that we placed earlier to just kind of like cover up all of this empty space here so we're not going to gradiate it in towards the center of the build so like for instance we're not going to like you know do this we're going to just have kind of like a flat part of the roof and we're, we're just covering up all of the empty space. And on the corners, we will also just kind of like have to connect these as well. So. It's probably actually just easier to do this part and then go and fix all of the corners where necessary. So remove these here. Or we'll just we'll just do it to the corners as uh, as we kind of just get around to it, I suppose. And then just here on this back corner, just have to add one there. And I think that might be it. Okay, that's that's the roof. That's a nice looking palace right there. Next, we want to work on the palace steps. So come all the way over to the row of stone brick stairs that we placed a really long time ago. And underneath and in front of these, we want to add six additional rows of stone brick stairs. So one, two, three, four, five, six, like this. And we want to extend these stairs across so they are the same width as the top row of stairs. This would be easier if we had something to place these stairs on, but we're almost done now, so... On the sides of the stairs, we want to add a row of stone, like this. Then, we want to place an inside wall on the stone to create a rail, like this. And on the other side as well. Now that we have our steps, we then want to place a row of stone underneath this bottom row of stairs. And then we want to extend the stone forwards by 12 rows. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And we want to do the exact same thing to all of these. We 
We then want to grab smooth stone and place a row of four smooth stone left of this first row, one, two, three, four, and extend the stone forwards by seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we just want to make all of these rows the exact same length, just like this. And then we are going to place a row of seven stone extending left of this smooth stone. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, just like this. We are then going to extend the stone forwards and line up with the stone over there. So we will then extend to the right and then we will just join all the way back to where we first started. This might seem a little bit complicated, but if we take a look at it like this, there we go, nice and simple. So we want to fill this area in here with grass block. We are going to have a golden dragon, or as what, what kind of looks like a golden dragon in this area. And then we want to place rows of stone stairs. So what block do we not need? We don't really need the lime terracotta right now. So we want to place rows of stone stairs specifically extending down and forwards from our smooth stone that will line up with the edge of this stone platform. So there should be one, two, three, four rows of stone stairs like this and this will just cover the width of the area. Again, it might seem a little bit confusing, but if you take a look, it actually makes quite a bit of sense. So now that we have done this, let's just move on to the other side and do the same thing. So we want to place a row of four smooth stone, one, two, three, four, extend it forwards by seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then we can just fill this in. We then want to add a row of seven stone extending right of this back row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And this wants to extend all the way forwards and line up with the edge of this platform, just like this. We are then going to fill the platform in using grass block. Then we are going to add the stone stairs. So it doesn't really matter what we place underneath the stairs. We should have four rows in total like this, just lining up with the edge here. We also want to add some andesite wall just around this central area just where the stairs start like this. And I want to add lime terracotta underneath these, for a lack of a better term, platforms. So the lime terracotta will sit just around the edge and it will come down as far as where we have these stairs already. And we just want to do this pretty much just around the stone part. So we'll know where to stop in a second. Okay, so we only have to come about as far as here because eventually we will just connect these stones down and there, there will be something underneath this area. So the stone will kind of like meet up here, it will cover up all of this, all of this space and this stone will like extend across and join back to the palace like this and we will place just rows and rows of stone that coincide with these rows here and this will just cover up all of this empty space but we'll do that little bit of landscaping in a second because it is going to take a lot of time so let's just place all of the other lime terracotta just in between and next to these stairs and we'll do all of the other fine details such as making the dragon statues and then we'll work on uh, making the landscape look nice. So once again, we only have to extend about as far back as about here, really, and then just fill the side of this in with lime terracotta. And let's take a look. Perfect. So we are now going to make a couple of dragon statues. So these dragon statues are relatively simple to make. We'll start over here on the left, grab a block of gold and line up with this smooth stone here. We then want to follow this line along and find this grass block. On top of this, place two block of gold, one, two, 
Extend left two, one, two, and down. We then want to extend this block forwards by two, one, two, then up two, one, two, forwards one, and on top of this, we want to place a dark prismarine slab, and behind this block, an upside down dark prismarine stairs, and just extending out the top. I think that we actually want to place an upside down stair here, which is very tricky to do, unless... Okay, this is what we want to do, so... Two upside down stairs on top of each other, slab here. We then want to place a block of gold here and extend back by three, one, two, three. We then want to extend down, left, down, right, down. We then want to extend back by two, one, two, up, and then back just like this. Actually, does this want to be a little bit higher? Let's go up by one like this so that it's just a little bit higher than the body. That's absolutely perfect. So now that we have done that on this side, let's come all the way over to the opposite side, line up with the edge of this path here, find this grass block that coincides with it, two block of gold on top of each other, extend to the right by two, join down, extend this central block forwards one, or two, one, two, and then up by two, one, two, forwards one, slab on top of this block, an upside down stair here, and then we want to place another upside down stair on top. It's just easier to place something so that we are able to place a stair. We then want to place a block of gold here and extend back by three, one, two, three. We then want to extend down, left, down, extend this block right and down. We then want to extend this block back by two, one, two, up two, one, two, and then back by one. I did also contemplate giving them uh, eyes as well, uh, but I think that they probably look a little bit weird. Do they look weird with the eyes? I think it, I think it's actually better to leave the statue. <laughs> I think the eyes kind of make them look a little bit goofy, so I think that we'll leave them eyeless and it leaves them a little bit more open to interpretation. So next we are going to finish what we started over here. We are just going to fill this area in with stone. So this will once again connect down to a floor that will just sit below this area here. But we have to fill in the side of this little hill in with stone. And then we are going to come over onto the opposite side and do the exact same thing. So we can place stone extending down here. And we just want to line up with this block so we can extend this across and this will join to here. Extend this block down just to where we have the lime terracotta. And then we can fill this area in here with stone and then this hill area in with stone as well. So unfortunately, this next part is going to take a really long time. We have to extend this stone block backwards like all the way back and we want to connect it to the back of the palace so it will extend to here there we go that's perfect and we will have to then extend this block across and connect it to here and lastly, we will then just extend all the way forwards and connect to the front of the build, like this. Oh, and also just here as well. Okay, so we don't need this row anymore. Actually, there was no real reason to delete it, but this gives us three really giant walls, which we now have to fill in with stone. So these massive areas that we have just made, we have to fill in with just stone. Unfortunately, we can't leave these empty. There's nothing to cover up all of this massive empty space if we don't fill these in.
Moving on to the back of the build now. You know, the good news is that we don't have to fill underneath this in. We can actually leave that side blank, so that's a positive. Moving on to the last side now. It looks so weird to just have a giant floating palace in the middle of nowhere. With the entire outside of the palace made, we are now going to head inside and- Oh, hang on, wait, I forgot we don't have a floor. We are going to work on the interior. So, the first thing that we are going to do is place a row of 22 cyan concrete extending backwards from this smooth stone block. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. And we want to do the exact same thing on the opposite side of the door. We then want to connect these together left to right with a row of stone. We then want to place a mixture of polished diorite and dark prismarine in between these rows to create a checkered pattern that is going to make up the floor that will lead to the pool area. Usually I would suggest placing all of one block first, like in an entire area, but we, we don't have anything to place our blocks on, so this is the next best thing. So the next thing that we are going to do is place a stone behind our cyan concrete, just like this. We are then going to place a row of three, one, two, three red concrete extending outwards from the stone. And behind the red concrete, we want to place red terracotta and this red terracotta will extend all the way to the side of the build and it should line up with the sides of these windows. So the reason that that's relevant is because we want to place one, two, three here, red terracotta and then extend all the way over. The reason that this is relevant is because we are going to 
extend all of this red terracotta. By the way, I did also consider using sideways looms. That also looks good as well, but I think the red terracotta is a little bit more thematic. So we want to extend all of these blocks up quite high. We haven't established a roof level yet, but if you extend it to the prismarine bricks, then it won't be too far off there. So this is going to cover up the back part of the palace. Perfect, which gives us two giant areas, one on the left, one on the right. And we want to fill those in exclusively with cyan glazed terracotta. So we are going to do just that. Next, we are going to make the pool area, which will give us a little bit of light as well. So, first of all, we want to place a row of six red concrete extending backwards from this block. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then in, back, in, back, across by five. One, two, three, four, five. In, right, in, right. And then just extend all the way forwards, just like this. So we can line this with candles, just a single candle on each block. And we are just going to light these and this will provide a, you know, I, I kind of expected there to be more light, I'm going to be honest. Okay. So next, I'm just going to place an entire row of bookshelves just all the way around the upper back part of our red concrete. So just all the way around, just like this. And we actually want to add another row on top of this. It is actually a little bit more complicated than this. There is a little bit more detail, but I think it's just easier to place the bookshelves. And then on top of this, we want to place sideways beehives. So we just want to place them in such a way that we don't see the hole on the beehive. So we should be good placing them like that. That's absolutely perfect. It's so dark in here. Okay, I'll tell you what, this might work. So now that we kind of have the shape, we can place a row of stone all the way along the inside of our red concrete shape, just like this, okay? So it will kind of like form a circle like this. I think that we're going to have to alter it so that we remove... What blocks do we have to remove so it's a little bit more circular in nature? So I'll tell you what, let's place Andensite 
here like this. So we have four in and sight, and then we'll extend back and outwards on both sides, and then back by three, one, two, three, like this, one, two, three, and in, back, in, back, and then join together. Then we are going to place sea lanterns. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Sea lanterns underneath the Edmund site, just like this. And then we can just fill these gaps in. There we go. I think I was right, actually. It, di it didn't look right, though, the way that I did it. But that's okay. It doesn't matter. So then we can actually fill the base of this in with cyan concrete. Or any sort of blue block will do, to be honest. But cyan concrete, just because we have it. And then we can just fill this with water. There we go. That's perfect. So now, coming back to this, we are going to place two additional rows of bookshelves on top of our beehives. Then we are going to grab our stripped dark oak wood, and we want to separate some of these uh, rows of bookshelves vertically. We want to remove this row here and this row here, and we want to place our dark oak wood here and here. And then on the left side as well, we will do a similar thing. We will remove this row here and we will place our wood here and also here. Is that the same place? No, it's not. So here and here. We could actually, if we wanted to, kind of like, we, we could go for a similar vibe in that we could place a row here, right? Make sure that they're all facing the same way as well. So, oh, well, man. Oh, I was still on the slab here. And then we could have another row here, for instance. And then we can place these like so. So, the reason that I say that is because then we kind of have like, it looks the same as the back followed on to the side. I think that that's, I, th I think that that actually looks better. So, I believe that we will do that. It's, uh, it's a small detail, but. You know, there's actually not too much inside of this, uh, inside of the palace, so... Or Hall of Warriors, I do believe that the specific part is called. Might be wrong about that, but there we go. Okay, perfect. So that, that actually looks so much better. And there is a little bit more to it, but to make this next part, we have to start working on the actual roof of the palace. So let's do that and then we will just come back to that part because it there is a little bit more. Next, we are going to make the shape of the roof. This is really simple. We want to start off by placing a prismarine here and here, a dark prismarine to be exact. We then want to extend the upper half of the block inwards with a slab and then extend up, in, up. So in, up, in, up. Connect together left to right like this. And then we want to fill this area in with prismarine bricks. And then we want to extend our dark prismarine all the way to the opposite side of the palace. It will connect here. That's absolutely perfect. And we want to extend this rope as well. This will extend all the way over to here and connect to this part of the palace. We can then fill these two roofs in with dark prismarine. I almost called them bricks. I always call these bricks. Have they been changed? Or is it always just being dark prismarine? I feel as though that I'm losing my mind. I'm sure that these used to be bricks once upon a time. And once we have done that side, we are going to come all the way over onto this side. And you will notice it's getting gradually darker and darker in here. And that's kind of the point, to be honest. It's kind of meant to feel a little bit like ominous in here. It's meant to have a bit of mood to this room. So while it's not really great for building in the dark, uh, it is kind of like atmospheric. So we, we are going... There are lights, though, that we do need to add. So I think that we'll probably add those, and they, they use campfires though. 
So they're kind of like loud and annoying, but would you prefer it to be loud and annoying and you can see, or... Hmm. Okay, so next we are going to extend the other dark prismarine blocks all the way back and we are going to connect to this back wall. So the dark prismarine, just dark prismarine, and also the dark prismarine slabs as well. So we will extend these as far back as we possibly can. That also includes through these as well. Actually, do, do we want to extend through or do we kind of want to leave that open? We'll extend through. I might leave it open. I don't know, we'll see. But we have to extend the top as well. So eventually we will have filled this entire roof section in, but there is a problem. We want to destroy directly above this pool area into the roof. So it's actually, it's kind of tricky to do, but not so tricky if you kind of like get into this position here. And we can always extend blocks up if need be. So I think that those these two blocks here coincide with these two water blocks here. We're just destroying the water part at the moment. So the shape of the water like this. And then I want to install shroom light in the hole that we have just destroyed. So just like this. And then we can drop down. But a little bit more complicated than this. We want to... We might have to place the shroom light a little bit higher, actually. So we are going to add... Because it, it is possible if we just destroy these rows of... Okay, so here, here, here. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's not possible because that leads directly onto the outside here. So this might be where the shroom light has to be, actually. So like this. And we kind of want to destroy around the shroom light... So let's make the shape as it should be, like this. Okay, so you can see that the shroom light is the shape of the water area, and we have excavated around this. So just below the shroom light, we want to drop in some mangrove slabs, just like this. There we go, that's perfect. But I would actually prefer it if the shroom light was one row higher. D does it definitely interfere? I don't think it does interfere, actually. I think we can make it higher. Okay, perfect. I, I kind of confused myself. So we can add like a ring like this, and then it's a little bit higher. So we've just got to add some slabs here, and we should get a cool depth effect, so. There we go. There we go. That's what we're looking for. That's a lot better. That looks really cool. Doesn't this look cool? And then we can add some yellow stained glass paint, just kind of like dripping down. And that is this part of the palace complete. Very cool. Next, we have to make a series of pillars on the left and right sides of this pathway. So these pillars line up with these two red terracotta blocks. We leave a gap of three. So one, two, three. And then we place warped stairs facing this way, warped stairs opposite, and then we place warped planks extending up from the stairs all the way up. And we just have to destroy these slabs here where necessary so that they look as though they're built into the ceiling. Very cool. And then we simply just leave a gap of four, one, two, three, four, and then we do it again. Then leave a gap of four, one, two, three, four, 
and then we do it one more time for this side. Perfect. So once again, we do have a darkness problem, but I, I don't really want to do anything about it because it's... You know what, I mean, we can place some, like, sea lanterns or something on the floor just so that it is a bit brighter. I probably should have done this a long time ago, but that's okay. So this will just keep things nice and bright for the minute. Uh, but we want to do the exact same thing that we have over over there on this side. So I'm just going to use uh, what we've already made to just kind of, like, line these up. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And I've just got to add the warped planks. We probably should have started by adding <laughs> a light source in here. I usually use a command to make uh, make places brighter because oftentimes it'll be a place that wants to be nice and bright, but this in this particular case it, it doesn't want to be bright in here. So uh, now that we have made all of these pillars, we have to make some torches along the sides of the temple. So uh, the way that oh, it's not a temple, it's a palace. Is there a difference? I guess there is. Regardless, we are going to grab mud brick wall and we are going to place torches lining up simultaneously with this red concrete here and all of the uh, red concretes along the side wall. So like one would be here for instance, here, here, here. We don't have any in this area but we leave a gap of two, gap of two, gap of two, just like this. On top of all of these, we will place spruce fence. And on top of these, we will place campfires. The only thing I don't like about campfires is the sound. If they didn't make a sound, it would actually be just fine. There might very well be a setting that I'm simply just not aware of to turn off the sound for campfires just specifically, but we're not going to have to deal with them for very long because this is the last part of the inside of the palace. So once we have added torches on both sides of the room, that will be that. So that is the set of torches on this side. Let's come all the way over onto this opposite side and do the same thing. So we line up with this red concrete here, this row, and then we pretty we we just place them every every two blocks pretty much. So like if you don't want to line up with the outer windows, we place the mud brick wall, or perhaps just mud. No, it is mud brick wall. I'm starting to doubt myself on the names of these items, and then campfire on top of all of the spruce fence that we placed on the mud brick wall. Then we add spruce signs to the outer part of these. And with those torches added, we have officially completed the temple. There should be a door here. And now that we have officially completed the temple, we can move on to the next part of the tutorial. We're slowly but surely making our way to the ground. Next, we are going to work on the courtyard. So come all the way over to the left side of our stone steps and place a stone underneath this left step. Extend that stone forwards by four, one, two, three, four. Extend left by four, one, two, three, four. Extend forwards by ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Place two smooth stone, one, two. Eleven stone, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Extend to the right by nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Extend forwards by five. One, two, three, four, five. Extend to the right by four using smooth stone. One, two, three, four. Place a stone on the end and then start extending forwards by one, two, three, four, five. We then want to extend to the right by ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We then want to extend forwards by ten as well. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We then want to place two smooth stone, one, two, and then we want to place a row of 11 stone, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We then want to extend inwards and connect underneath our stone stair like this. We then want to place two rows of smooth stone along the stone row that extends from the stairs and then place a row of stone along the smooth stone and then connect together. So this might sound a little bit complicated, but if we take a look at this, it's actually really, really simple. This is what we want to end up with. Okay, so next we are going to come to the left side of what we have just made. Place six rows of smooth stone extending inwards from these two blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, just like this. We then want to place lime terracotta along the inside of the smooth stone. We then want to place a row of yellow terracotta and then lime terracotta, yellow, two rows of lime, one, two, a row of yellow, lime, yellow, lime. And then if you like, you can just extend all the way over to the opposite side using smooth stone. This is what we want to end up with. We are then going to place yellow terracotta above and below these two central, or rather four central lime terracotta blocks like this. We then want to place lime terracotta along the outside of this circular shape that we have created with the yellow terracotta. We then want to place yellow terracotta extending all the way around the lime terracotta circle and we want to connect it together in the corners like this to form an actual circle and then finally we want to do the exact same thing again but using lime terracotta around the yellow perfect now that we have done that, we can fill the rest of this area in using smooth stone. So all the way around the central circular shape. Next, we want to come to the end of this stone pathway and place a red terracotta extending off of the sides of these two stones. The terracottas want to be six rows high in total, so one, two, three, four, five, and we want to do this on both sides at the same time. We then want to extend these rows two rows forwards as well, so one, two, and they all want to be as high as each other. We then want to place an additional two red terracotta on top of these center rows. One, two here, and one, two here. We then want to connect them together with a row of prismarine bricks, just like this, left to right. Next, we are going to place dark prismarine slabs all the way around the top of our red terracotta and prismarine bricks. 
We are then going to place Dark Prismarine stairs on top of the Dark Prismarine slabs, like this. Then remove the four corner blocks and replace them with mangrove stairs. We then want to extend these corner slabs forwards and outwards on each one of the four sides. So forwards and outwards and forwards and outwards, just like this. We are then going to place sideways mangrove stairs on top of the outer blocks, just like so. We are then going to place three, one, two, three red concrete on top of each one of those inward terracottas. Then place two yellow concrete extending inwards from the middle red concrete just above the stair line, two yellow concrete on the left and right joined together in the middle with a row of block of gold. Next, slightly lower on the gate, we want to place a row of three, one, two, three block of gold extending outwards from that block, extend one block up and then place mangrove stairs all the way around the block of gold bamboo slabs on top of the block of gold, and then dark prismarine slabs underneath all of that, just like this. On the opposite side here, one, two, three gold, extend up, mangrove stairs all the way around the gold with bamboo slabs on top, and also dark prismarine slabs underneath the mangrove slash gold to give us this. We also want to add some doors. So the doors are right in the middle. We place red concrete on the left and right sides in the middle, just connecting from bottom to top. We then extend the red concrete two rows forwards like this. And that will give us that, which is looking really cool. Next, we are going to place some stone next to our gate. So on the right side, place a row of four, one, two, three, four stone extending outwards from the bottom of the gate, add a row of stone on top, extend the first two rows up and then add an additional stone here. Then place mossy stone brick slabs on top of all of our stone, just like this. And then do the same thing on the opposite side. So one, two, three, four, and then we want to extend these out, add a row on top, place two rows extending from the gate, an additional one in the middle, and then mossy stone brick slabs on top of all of our stone to give us this. We then want to extend our smooth stone forwards as well. This is just in between the gate, just like this. And we want to extend forwards two rows further than the actual gate itself. Then we want to place two, one, two, light gray terracotta, left and right of the smooth stone. And then we will simply place stone stairs in front of this. And then we will just keep placing rows of stone stairs until we eventually hit the ground. So it will look a little something like this, and we just have to extend these stairs across. So I'm just going to add a little bit of framework just to make it a tad easier. And with these stairs, we I've, I've kind of done an oops really by using uh, light grey terracotta. Uh, we want to place stone underneath these stairs. So uh, I probably should have just used stone in the first place, but it doesn't matter. It's not that many blocks. We are just going to connect this all the way down. So the way that you could actually circumvent this completely is by... So it's just underneath the stairs directly that we want terracotta because there will actually be a terracotta row, by the way, that kind of like extends all the way to the very edge of our boundary and then kind of like all the way around. And it's kind of like what our entire, uh, for lack of a better term, it's not really a kingdom, is it? I guess, because there's not really enough buildings for a kingdom, but our entire palace to kind of like sit on uh, will be like a big giant uh, light gray 
uh, terracotta row, but the stairs themselves do not want to have terracotta underneath them. And um, this is what we want to have so far. This this looks even more insane than just the palace for some reason. Next, we are going to make the two large buildings either side of this courtyard, starting with this side. So first of all, we are going to place a light gray terracotta underneath this block here. We will then extend outwards by three, so one, two, three, and then forwards by one. On top of this block, we will place a stone brick and extend that that way by 12. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We then want to extend towards the front of the build by 29. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. And then we can extend all the way this way and we can connect all the way back to where we first started. So we will end up with a rather large rectangle like this. That's perfect. So now that we have our rectangle, we're going to come all the way back to where we first started here and place a stone block on top of this block. Upside down stone stairs extending right of that block all the way over here. And then we will place another stone on the corner. We then want to place four upside down stone stairs extending this way, one, two, three, four. And then on top of this, we will place four red concrete, one, two, three, four. We then want to extend the concrete to the right by four, one, two, three, four, and then extend down. So one, two, three. So it would actually be easier if we extend the upside down stone stairs row all the way over to the right just so that we have something to connect to when we hit this corner here just place a stone but this is what we should have so far and then we want to continue extending right here and we want to place four more one two three four red concrete and join down then we want to place five one two three four five red concrete and join down and then we want to go back to four one two three four join down one more time, one, two, three, four, and then join down just like this. Then we are going to place red terracotta all the way along the inside of our red squares slash the one rectangle that we have. So leaving the middle blocks exposed. <clears throat> and then we want to place white stained glass in the middle of all of those just like this. We then want to extend each row of red concrete, the vertical rows, I should specify. We want to extend them each up by four, one, two, three, four, connect them together at the top and also just down. So what we effectively want to do is we want to add another row of windows and terracotta just up above here. So doing the exact same thing, we want to add the terracotta just along the insides of each one of our square slash rectangle. And then a white stained glass just right in the middle like this. So this is where things get ever so slightly more complicated. So we are going to add an additional row of red concrete on top of what we have just made. Then we are going to place a row of four, one, two, three, four, red concrete extending up from the corner here, and then extend all the way across and then down. Then we are going to add the vertical rows of red concrete like this then we are just going to fill all of these areas in with red terracotta specifically there will be a row of dark prismarine in front of this row of red concrete so this is just above the windows here there will then be half a row's gap, and then there will be a row of dark prismarine slabs just underneath here. 
but then there will be an additional row of dark prismarine on top of this like so and then just all the way up at the top here there will be a row of dark prismarine slabs just across the red concrete so honestly guys that was a little bit more for me than for you, just to make sure that we have done that correctly. But that is what the back of this build should look like at the moment. So now that that is all marked out and looking correct. So now we are going to extend certain red concrete blocks forwards to form the sides of this building. So we want to extend this red concrete forwards by four, one, two, three, four, and then down. And then this block forwards by four, one, two, three, four and then extend down. We will then extend this block forwards as well, just following the shape of the back of the build really, just like this. And then just on the sides here, we will also extend this block forwards and join down. Although the sides of the build are a little bit different than the front, but what is consistent is the fact that we do want windows in the exact same design as we have them on the back so each one of these little three by three squares here we can add red terracotta along the inside of them and then white stained glass inside of the rest so just like this and then we can come to the opposite side and we can make this so one two three four and then down one two three four and then down extend this block up this one here Add this row here, extend from across the top, down, just like this. And then we just want to cut this area in half. Add, whoops, add a row of red terracotta here. And then we can just fill in the windows as we filled in the back windows and the opposite side windows as well. So that is both sides kind of not really complete. There's actually a lot more going on with the sides, but the front of the build is actually a little bit more simple. So for the front of the build, I think that it would, it would simply be easier if we have our row of spruce planks extending and connecting to just underneath the windows on the left and right side like this. And then we actually want to add the same red concrete structure that we have on the back of the build to the front of the build. So the double row of red concrete and the vertical rows and horizontal rows of red concrete, kind of just connecting everything together just like this. The exact same as we have on the back. So it would be here, up, and here. So the only main difference really on the front of the build is instead of having windows just in the center here, we will instead have mangrove doors and then the rest of the area will just be red terracotta. So everywhere else though, it's pretty much the exact same thing that we have built a bunch of times already. It's red terracotta just all the way around the empty space with a glass just in the middle. So just like this. And then just the center area as well with the doors, which is from the red terracotta. And then glass, glass, and then red terracotta here. And when it actually comes to this top bit, we can connect the red concrete together just left to right like this and then we want to add the same vertical rows that we have just below as well extend all the way up and then we are just going to fill well it's, it's not quite okay so it, it goes like this we have a red terracotta here glass terracotta glass in the middle terracotta either side the central bit here is just red terracotta but then for the other two spaces we just have the glass at the top. The reason that we have it this way is because uh, there will be roof covering everything else. And when it comes to the side of the build, we just kind of like have to, it would be easier to fill the remaining space that we have in on the sides. So just fill this in. On the sides here, if we just fill this in with red terracotta,
On the sides of the build, we also want to extend these red concrete rows outwards and join to our stone. So we want to extend the corner blocks at the front and the back outwards, join down to the stone and also to each other. And then we also want to add this vertical row of red concrete as well, just like this. And we also want to extend this row forwards and to here as well. So on the sides of the build, we will have something that should look like this. And there will also be a horizontal row of stone stairs that kind of cuts all of this in half, just all the way around like this. That's perfect. And we want the exact same thing on the opposite side. So if we come to the opposite side, it's probably a good idea to add the upside down stone stairs just extending forwards and to this corner here. And we can do a similar thing on the front. So on the front, they'll extend inwards here and inwards here, just like this. And we want to have a stone placed here and here. Let's place the stone stairs just like this. And then in between these, we will have stone bricks. The reason that this is important is because we want to now come to the side of the build and do the exact same thing as we did. So we'll extend this row outwards and down. And we'll extend this towards the front, connect here. And we'll also extend, whoops, we will extend all the way down and a row here. And then we'll extend forwards and down just like this. We will then extend a row of red concrete all the way across to the opposite side, just like this. There we go. And then we will add vertical rows of red concrete to the front of this in the same places that the concrete are on the building. So if that makes sense, we will add the rows here and we will line up with the actual building as well on this side. We want to have the row of upside down stone stairs that cuts everything in half. This just extends all the way through all of these red concretes. Then we are going to place spruce planks inside of all of these spaces. So this is at the bottom. We want to be able to walk around inside of this area. So this is going to be the floor here. And then just up above, we also want to fill this balcony area in with spruce planks as well. And now that we have done that, we are just going to place iron bars on top of all of these stone stairs. On the ground level and also the upper level. Next on the sides of the build, we are going to start adding in some of the roof structure. It's actually really complicated. So uh, we will add a yellow glazed terracotta here, 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 and here. We want to place three, one, two, three red concrete to the left and right. We then want to add two red, red concrete here, here, and then just one on top like this. We will then place dark prismarine slabs 
just on the sides of our red concrete like this and extend forwards and upwards and inwards until we eventually reach a peak over the center of this just like this and then we will be able to extend the dark prismarine blocks towards the wall and Once we have done this on one side of the build, like this, we're going to go ahead and do the exact same thing on the opposite side. So, yellow glazed terracotta here, left, right, above, and then two red concrete here, and here. Actually, it's not two, is it? It's three. So, three, extending outwards, two here, two here, one here, and then we will place dark prismarine slabs on the sides of this, extending upwards and inwards until we reach peak over this and then out and down, out and down, out and down, just like so. And then these will extend towards the build, just like this. And then Dark Prismarine. Not only do we want to do that, but we want to place dark prismarine slabs all the way around the outside of the top of this area. So the slabs want to extend all the way around the outside of the build like this, and they will just join around the back. And then we want to add another row. So once we've made one row, we will add an additional row just behind these. Or in front of them, I guess. And then that will require us to replace these red concretes with dark prismarine. But then we will be able to, this is, this is a bit tricky because of all the blocks that we've placed, but then we will be able to place, oh no, dark prismarine slabs up and around just like this, extending towards the center of the build. So this does require a little bit of finesse. And we will then have to extend from here. just like this, and then we will start here. Next, we want to make the corners of these roofs interesting. So, kind of similar to what we have done all along with the roof shapes, we want to mark out this dark prismarine slab here, and this one here, so this corresponds to where the vertical pillar is on these sides. Remove everything in between and then extend the slabs inwards and upwards until they reach a corner point like this. We want to do this on both the front and the back, so here and here, and it's the exact same method for them both, just like this. And now that we've done that side, we can go ahead and move on to this opposite side and do the exact same. Oh, I've just noticed on this side of the build as well that we haven't extended this roof inwards all the way. We just did the prismarine on that side. That's very strange. I'm also not sure why we have this row of prismarine bricks here. We can actually... Prismarine bricks! It's just dark prismarine! We don't need that row there, nor do we need this row of prismarine. I'm sure that there is a reason that I must have placed that initially, but uh, we don't actually need that whatsoever. So when we do the opposite, 
we won't repeat that mistake. So there we go. We can place the red concrete here. And unless we can... Oh, and we need to fill this gap in as well with red concrete. So unless we actually need that row of red concrete, then I think that we will... I mean, it, it doesn't look bad. It looks okay. We might just leave it as is but instead of tampering with that. But now that we have done that, we are now going to place a row of dark prismarine slabs all the way around the very top of the build. Then add another row of slabs all the way around the outside of this. Then we are going to place red concrete on the left and right side, but we'll start over here on the left first of all. We will place a row of red concrete that is just one row shorter than both sides, just left to right like this. We then want to place a red concrete here and here with yellow glazed terracotta in between. Extend the center terracotta up and then place red concrete along the sides, just like this. We will then place dark prismarine along the outer shape of this on top of the red concrete like so and then we want to come onto the opposite side and do the same thing so red concrete here yellow glazed terracotta here extend the middle block up red concrete along the outsides and then we can place dark prismarine along the outsides of the red concrete we are then going to connect the dark prismarine together, just like this, left to right. And we also want to extend the dark prismarine off of the side of the build as well. Next, we are going to make the corners of the roof nice and fancy. So we will place a dark prismarine slab here and here. Remove what's in the middle and then extend the slabs upwards and inwards like this. And we will do this on each one of the four corners of the build. So here, like this, and then all the way over here. Next, we have to add a small staircase to the front of the building here. So we will place stone brick stairs here and also in front to meet down to the ground. Place some stone either side of the staircase extending forwards. Then we want to connect these stone blocks to the sides of our staircase with smooth stone in between, which will eventually give us our 100% fully completed building. I didn't realize how massive this thing is because of course it's a little bit overshadowed by the palace itself, but we have to make literally the exact same thing just over on this side now. Okay, so coming all the way over to the opposite side of our courtyard, we start things in the same way. We place a light gray terracotta underneath this lime terracotta here. We extend to the right by three, one, two, three, and then forwards by one. On top of this block, we then place a stone brick and we extend it that way by 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. We then extend that way by 29. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. We can then extend across and then we can join all the way back to where we started to form a rectangle. Just 
like this. Okay, so next we are going to come all the way to, once again, kind of where we started, place a stone, just a good old regular stone on top of this block, and then upside down stone stairs extending across the short side of this build with a stone on the end. We then want to place four upside down stone stairs extending this way. One, two, three, four. On top of this, we want to place four red concrete. One, two, three, four. And then extend left by four. One, two, three, four. It would be a good idea, just as we did on the previous side, to extend all of our upside down stone stairs all the way over to the left, just so that we have something to connect down to. And we can stick a stone on the end here as well. And upside down stone stairs leading towards the center of the build. And a stone here, and then we'll just leave that side exposed for now. But continuing on, let's come all the way back to this row of red concrete and connect it down. We then want to extend left by another four, one, two, three, four, and connect it down. Extend left by five, one, two, three, four, five, and connect down. Left by four, one, two, three, four, and connect down. Once more, one, two, three, four, and connect down. We can then add our red terracotta all the way along the inside of all of these areas. Leaving the middle blocks exposed. And then we can just fill those in with white stained glass. Once we have done this, we now want to add pretty much the exact same thing on top of this. So every single red concrete, or at the very least, the vertical rows, we want to extend up by four. One, two, three, four. And then I'm just going to extend it all the way across. And then connect down. And then I'll add in the vertical rows. I think it's just a little bit easier this way. Now let's add all of the red terracotta in. And then let's add the white glass in, in the middle for the windows. Perfect. So next we are going to add another layer of red concrete on top of this. And then we are going to add four, one, two, three, four red concrete on top of this, to which we will then extend all the way across. And we will join down. We will add the same vertical rows in as we have just below. And then we will fill these gaps in using red terracotta exclusively. Wonderful. So, the sides of the build. We now have to extend these particular red concrete blocks forwards by three, or four, sorry. One, two, three, four. And then we have to extend down. And then one, two, three, four, and then extend down, just like this. We then have to do the same thing, just up above, we have to extend these blocks. One, two, three, four, extend down. One, two, three, four, and extend down. And then the very top, we extend and connect down, just like this. And we add the same vertical rows all the way through. We can then add our red terracotta to the sides here. We want to have windows on the sides. The only difference is with these very top windows, we are just going to place red terracotta. We won't have any glass, but all of the other windows, the exact same thing as we have done many times before. And now we are going to come to the opposite side and do the same thing. So we will extend this block here, one, two, three, four, and then down, one, two, three, four, and then down. And then I'm just going to extend up now. I'm gonna to join to the top. Add the vertical row just straight up the middle. Horizontal row across here. And then we can add the red terracotta where necessary. The first two 
floors get windows, but the third one does not, so we'll just leave the gaps here. And then all the way up at the top, we will just completely fill it in with red terracotta. And then we can add all of the glass, just like this. That's perfect. And then when it comes to the front of the build, we pretty much want to copy what we have on the back of the build. So we will place the two horizontal rows of red concrete. So this one here and this one here. We'll add an additional row here. And this one here. They kind of just go throughout the entire build, except for the sides, but they could also extend through the sides as well. It's just we won't see them anyway. And then I'm just going to place a row of spruce planks just underneath the front, just connecting both sides together, just because I, I find it a little bit easier to then place all of these vertical rows of red concrete that extend all the way through the build, just like this. And then we get to add the doors to the center because we don't have windows on the front in the middle at the very least. We have just two sets of doors so that we can exit out onto the balcony and actually get inside of this area as well. And I'm just going to fill these two middle bits in with red terracotta completely. And then I'm going to fill the entire top level in using red terracotta. And then for the other windows, I think that you guys already know what's coming. We are going to add red terracotta all the way along the inside of the shape, leaving just that one little block exposed, which we will then fill in with glass. But I'm going to make all of the red terracotta first. Make the red terracotta. I'm going to place all of the red terracotta. I've not made it. I plucked it from the, from the creative menu. I did not craft these blocks. Then we want to add white stained glass into each one of these gaps here. And that's perfect. So the next thing that we are going to do is we are just going to fill all of this little surrounding area in here with spruce planks because we want to be able to walk on top of this. Oh, it's also a good idea to mark out uh, the actual entrance area as well, I suppose. So the entrance area, we want to have a stone here, a stone here, stone bricks here, and then we will actually just leave it like that. So we then want to have upside down stone stairs extending just across the tops of these stone bricks. And then there we go, that's a much better defined area to fill in. So next, we are going to add some rows of red concrete. The rows of red concrete extend from these blocks right here, which is why we have this row of red concrete in the first place. So we want to place a row of one, two, three, four red concrete extending outwards and then down. And then we will extend across here, connect here and extend the corner down and we will have a vertical row of red concrete here, just like this, that's perfect. But we also have to extend outwards to here and down. And we will extend all the way across and join down to this corner, just like so. Here, extend back and across, extend the corner down we will also add a vertical row of red concrete here and here and here, here, here. Pretty much everywhere we have the vertical rows of red concrete. I'm going to stop saying here. I said it again, didn't I? And we are just going to... This will be the last one right there. Perfect. 
Then we have to add an upside down row of stone stairs that cuts all of these in half. This is where we have the horizontal row of red concrete that kind of just permeates throughout the whole build. We then want to add, well, actually, first of all, let's add spruce planks into this balcony area. We'll just completely fill this in. Then we are going to add iron bars to all of the upside down stone stairs. Next, we are going to work on part of the roof. So we begin by placing three, one, two, three, red concrete extending inwards here. Then three, yellow glazed terracotta, one, two, three. Three more red concrete, one, two, three. Extend the center terracotta up by one. Two red concrete left, two red concrete right, and an additional one just on the top. We then want to place dark prismarine slabs extending off the left and right sides of this particular part of the roof, we then want to extend these slabs inwards and upwards until they just eventually connect over the top point like this. We will then extend the slabs and oh, we'll also add in additional red concrete when necessary as well. So here and here, this is a problem we ran into on the opposite side of the build. But we'll extend these slabs inwards. This is actually reverse of how I usually do it. It'd be easier to add the dark prismarine blocks first and then add these slabs afterwards. So extend these in, connect to the build, just like this. That's absolutely perfect. So we will now move on to the opposite side of the build and do the exact same thing. So one, two, three red concrete extending inwards along this row, three yellow glazed terracotta, three red concrete, extend the yellow glazed terracotta up in the middle, two red concrete left, two red concrete right, and then an additional one on the top. We then want to place dark prismarine slabs extending off the left and right sides, extend them forwards, and then extend each of them upwards and inwards until they eventually connect together above the top like this. We then want to extend red concrete here and here, just like this, and then we can extend the prismarine inwards as well. Next, we are going to place a layer of dark prismarine slabs all the way along the outside of the bottom half of our red terracotta road that kind of just extends all the way around the top of the build. Now that we have one row, we are going to add an additional row on the outside of it. Then we are going to remove this part of the red concrete and replace it with dark prismarine. We then want to place rows of dark prismarine slab 
above and inside this row of dark prismarine. And we just kind of want to follow the shape of the previous layer of the roof every time, so wherever we can just kind of fit it, I think that we'll just extend into the roof here as well. So just on the left and the right side, we just want to add an additional slab because I think it just looks a little bit better. Ladies and gentlemen, I just noticed that this building does not match this building, but it's a really easy fix to make them both the same. All we have to do is add an additional row of red concrete at the very top of this building. And then take the row of red concrete underneath and replace the horizontal rows of red concrete with red terracotta. So not these rows, but these rows, replace them with red terracotta and that's it. Nice and simple. We do also have to make the windows at the top front of the build as well, but all we have to do is just change the middle blocks at the top on the left two and the right two sides here. We just have to replace those center blocks with white glass. And there we go, we have restored balance. Next, come all the way up to the top of the build once again and place a row of red concrete along the side here. It should be one row shorter on the left and right side as the previous row. Stick a yellow glazed terracotta in the middle of the next row, extend it left, right, stick one on top, and then place a red concrete here, 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 and here, and boom, that is absolutely perfect. So we want to do the exact same thing on the opposite side. We will add a row of red concrete here, and then three yellow glazed terracotta here, 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 and that is the shape of the roof, nice and simple. We will then add a row of dark prismarine slabs all the way along the outside of the top of the building. And then we will add another row along the outside of the slabs. Then we are going to add dark prismarine here along the outside of the red concrete shape that we've made. We want the dark prismarine to extend one row off of the side here and we just want to extend the dark prismarine all the way across, set along the side, then extend off here and then we just have to connect both sides together. Next, we have to make the corners of the roofs fancy. So this is going to start on the lower level here. We place a dark prismarine slab here and here, remove what's in the middle, and then of course we extend them up and inwards until they reach a point. And we do this on each one of the four corners, first of all on the lower level, And then we can hop up to the next level and then do the exact same thing. So, uh, as you guys might remember, I didn't vocalize this because we've, we've done it a few times already. We line up with the corners 
of the build on the upper side here and on the lower side so we just line up with the red concretes here and also here as well and that's how we determine where the slabs go uh, just because I didn't say it but I think that you guys will probably remember how to do this I mean we had to do this uh, a fair few times on the opposite side as well Next, we have to make the stairs. So to do this, we are just going to place a couple of rows of stone brick stairs leading down towards the courtyard with some stone either side of these stairs like this. Then we have to connect these stone blocks here and here and then fill in between these in with smooth stone. And that is the second building complete. With all of the large structures of the build complete, we now have to make, well, everything else. This includes the very ground that we need to support these structures and the walls surrounding them. This is actually a massive task. First of all, we have to place a row of light grey terracotta that extends from this row that we made earlier and down to the ground. So it will extend outwards from the side of those steps and all the way down to the ground like this. We will then extend all the way back. Keep going. We're over halfway there. and we will connect it to the back corner of the grid. We will then extend all the way across. And join down to this opposite corner. We will then extend forwards, all the way forwards, and we will connect to the opposite side of our steps here. And we're just gonna join this corner down. Okay, so here's the thing. This giant shape that we've made now needs filling in. Yeah, so we're gonna start with the sides of it. This thing is absolutely massive. It's gonna take a really long time. There's nothing complicated about this. Uh, we just gotta fill the sides in with light gray terracotta, and that's pretty much it. If you want to implement this into a more natural looking area, then maybe build up some stone around this, maybe some grass, kind of make a mountainous cliff sort of formation surrounding the entire palace, but, just to make it easy for you guys and for me for the tutorial, we're not going to be doing a huge amount of landscaping. We're just making the light grey terracotta, which still looks really good, by the way. It doesn't look weird or out of place, but if you did want to assimilate this better and be far more realistic and more true to the actual build, then this would be built kind of like surrounded by huge rocks and sort of like mountainous areas. But... We're going to go with the light grey terracotta, uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll continue doing what I'm doing, I'm going to be here for a while. I'm imagining that this particular part of the tutorial is being viewed through the replay mod, so we kind of get that like outer body experience of what it's like of me filling in this wall, and I'm just imagining how tiny Spider-Man looks <laughs> filling in this wall, just how far back I've had to like 
move the camera just so that we can fit this entire thing in. This this is going to look... Th this is crazy. This is going to take forever. I know that I missed that single block, guys. I'll get it on the way back. Ah, oh, that's one of the big sides done. Two more to go. Another side down. This is the final big side. This seems so much worse than the back. I think that the back might actually be a lot smaller. I thought that that went too fast.
The final giant is complete. All we've got to do now is this little bit at the front. For those curious, we just placed, roughly speaking, 3,000 blocks. And we're about to place a lot more, so we now have to make the entire floor for the palace grounds. So what that means is, anywhere that we have a gap, we have to fill it in using light grey terracotta, just like this. So I think that it might be easiest to kind of like get underneath the area here, especially for more the more like dense areas like around these buildings. I think it's kind of like easier to do it from just kind of like below. I don't know. We'll see. But regardless, it, it, it doesn't matter how this is accomplished. We've got to fill all of the empty space that we have in using light grey terracotta. As a matter of fact, I think I've just found the method that I want to use. I think I'm going to outline all of the buildings and all of the stuff that we just have kind of like around. I think I'm going to outline it in light grey terracotta and then I'm just going to fill it in this way. I know that everywhere this way is, is really quite easy to fill in because it's just like big open spaces. The parts that I'm more concerned about are the, well, the areas in between the buildings and um, the central sort of like little arena and stuff, so... Oh, there's this area at the back as well, I forgot about this. Yeah, I still think that this is probably the easiest way for me at least. I like filling in big shapes. Like, uh, I'd prefer it not to all just be like kind of like just floating in the air. So any time that can kind of just turn something into a shape, I just find it a lot, a lot easier just to focus on it. So if we just outline everything, that just gives us a nice big massive canvas. So here and all the way around here as well. I don't think I did this on this side, but it's okay. They're, these are kind of small areas. I think that I'm going to mostly just fill in the central part first anyway. And then once that's out of the way, then we can kind of just do like a massive loop all the way around uh, the rest of the build because it just kind of just joined together eventually. So if we just fill this in here and this here, and eventually when we are done, we will take a look at it from the bottom because if any light is being let in, then that means that we haven't done quite a good enough job. Oh, like, so it's easy just to, like, miss little blocks like this as well, so um, we just had a stone missing there. And I wonder how often that happens on, like, massive builds like this, where you just, you, you just forget, like, one little block here and there. Probably all the time knowing me. Right, I think that, yeah, okay, so I'm just going to fill these little bits in here, like, moving off to the side. So, like, I'll get all of this bit filled in leading all the way just to uh, the side of the area there. And then I'll, I'll fill in the equivalent side on the opposite.
There we go, that's perfect. So I'll leave this as it is, and then I'll fill this little weird gap in here as well. And then we can kind of just follow this all the way along um, the outside of our empty space, so to speak. Like, I'm probably not articulating what I mean very well, but we can, like, just keep filling in and filling in and filling in from this position. Oh no, we missed this part. See, it's so easy to miss stuff. So here, so we can just kind of like just keep filling in from this point and kind of like go clockwise around the entire outside of the build and we'll eventually end up where we started and hopefully that will be all of the uh, light grey terracotta filled in. I mean, th this has got to be a record, like light grey terracotta is not that typically used in builds, although I, I'm a massive fan of it, I actually really like it for builds, I think it's one of the the nicer blocks in my opinion, but I think that like in terms of overall building this might be the build that has used the most light grey terracotta ever. This is where someone links below. Actually, somebody made a mega base using only light grey terracotta. They used over five billion blocks. It was yay high. It could. It was actually as tall as the sun. Quick poll, is this more or less fun than filling in the sides of this? I reveal my poll result. Less fun. Oh, this is another good point, actually. So, as kind of like with the outside of this build, this area in particular, like kind of like around the sides of the kind of like central area here, um, this would all be landscaped. Like, this would all be stone and mountainy and hilly looking. It, it wouldn't just be like flat like this. But I purposefully left it this way because landscaping in itself can just take so very long. So if you would like to build upon this using a mixture of grass and stone and maybe even some snow if you're feeling a bit festive, then probably not so. But that that it would actually like be built up around here. It wouldn't just be flat. Do you know what would be cool, actually? I'm, I'm certain that you can do this using World Edit, although I've never done it. You know how bone meal kind of just applies a layer of like grass and flowers and whatever? Wouldn't it be cool if there was just something called, I don't know, land meal that you could just place and it kind of just built up kind of like a, a ballish area of just grass and stone and stuff so instead of having to like manually like landscape and add in like your own hills kind of like with bow meal you can just like land meal an area and you could quickly just like build up the terrain that's a tsmc original patent pending Alright, all right, guys, we're not even halfway, so we've just got to make it across about halfway of the back of the build, and then we've, we've completed 50% of the... Actually, we are a little over halfway, because we don't have to fill in the entire front section. We do only have to make it to, like, the, the right corner of the build, so at this point in time, we probably have filled half of this thing in, so that's pretty exciting. If not more, probably more. Oh yeah, look at this. Okay, so th this is all we've got to do. I might try it long ways, maybe that's easier. It's 
certainly requires less dexterity. Oh no, we've got this little bit in. Wow. Done it. Okay, for those of you curious, that is, in total, 6,000 <laughs> light grey terracotta blocks. That's mental. So we, li we literally just placed another 3,000. Well done. Guess what? I could have just filled that entire thing in with world edit this whole time. It would have took two minutes. But I'm building with you guys. We're in this together. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to be very happy to hear this. This is the final part. All we've got to do now is add a wall all the way around the perimeter of the palace. So, to do this, we place one, two, three, four white concretes extending from the center of this stone area. It lines up with the center of this gate with a row of dark prismarine slab on top of the white concrete. So, the white concrete extends all the way over to the sides of our area and we leave a gap of two all the way around the edge of the area. So, the white concrete will extend all the way back and around. Just maintain a gap of two from the side of our light grey terracotta and you can't really go wrong. This is, of course, another insanely long task, but it is not as bad as what we have just done, which is why we've saved it for last. I did consider doing this before the light grey terracotta part, but... You know, you gotta have something to look forward to in the end. This is no way near as bad.
And I do want to remind you guys that I could just world edit this, but we are building this together. So this will connect to the opposite side. I'm just placing this just so that I get the right line here. There we go. Oh, I nailed it anyway. And then we just got to go back on ourselves. So we just got to do this a few more times. Then the prismarine slabs on top. And then there we go. Another row down. One last row, guys, of white concrete. Just got to add that final layer of dark prismarine slabs on top of the wall. And there we go. We are done. And with that final detail added, ladies and gentlemen, we have officially completed this tutorial. However, this video is not over. We must now add this giant palace into our city. Part of me really wants to add this just right in the middle, just because why not? 
But the sensible part of me knows that we should add this to the outskirts of the city and build around this. Ultimately, I think it'd be cool to include this in kind of like a big forest. Maybe we could kind of like have a campsite here. We can move our motorhome and stuff. Like maybe we can really integrate this into kind of like a nice foresty destination or mountainous area. But for now, th this, is, this has just got to have its own space. It would be crazy not to. And that's it. I do hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial. Please do remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Click the little bell next to the subscription button to ensure that you get all of my videos sent directly to your sub box. And if you want to make anything else by me, look no further than the mini city builds playlist down below in the description. Or to some of the suggested videos underneath slash to the right of this one. Check out the channel directly or hopefully YouTube the next upcoming video is one of mine. YouTube, I'm looking at you. Consider becoming a channel member today and you will gain access to a cool avatar next to your name, some unique emojis, and access to my mini city design world containing every single build that has been added to mini city to date. This is well over a hundred builds, all chronologically ordered. Java edition only. Thank you so much for watching everybody, I hope to see you in the next one, good bye.